I'm Scott Cummins. I'm an allergist and immunologist at the University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill. And one of the things that I study, uh, both from uh, seeing patients and doing lab work, is a unique food allergy called alpha-gal allergy. And if you have this allergy, you know you're allergic to all kinds of mammalian meat. So whether it's beef, pork, lamb, venison, or bison, anything that has hooves and is a mammal um, that's not human or great ape, is off uh, the table in terms of things that you could eat. So for these folks, uh, the, uh, the reactions are unusual in that they are delayed, often three to six hours. So sometimes the diagnosis is difficult to make. So if you're waking up at night, um, middle of the night, 2 a.m., with hives or itching, um, it, it's worthwhile to consider if you had had a meal uh, that evening that could perhaps have been beef, pork, or lamb. Um, the other thing that we're finding uh, more recently is patients are telling us that they can have significant GI symptoms without necessarily having the typical allergic uh, hives and itchy skin to go with it. So it's worth adding that to um, your thought process when it comes to thinking about this alpha-gal allergy, because you may be someone who is suffering from distinct GI symptoms without the telltale allergic signs that might make you visit an allergist. So it's really helpful to keep track of one's dietary exposures, even in a situation where you might feel as though your symptoms are coming on so much later uh, or so long after eating. It's not, um, it's not out of the question that this could be a food allergy. One of the other things that we find is in addition to meat, some people have to avoid dairy products. So not only uh, milk and cheese, but things like ice cream are particularly important uh, for some folks with this alpha-gal allergy. Now there is, there is uh, we believe, a small minority of people with this allergy who need to have a more strict avoidance that uh, involves not only meat and dairy, but also some uh, products that have uh, mammalian parts uh, to them, such as like a gelatin capsule or um, jello itself, actually, uh, marshmallows. We find that this is more unusual, uh, but there are some people who need to take their avoidance diet to that extent. Typically in my clinic, if you are one who can tolerate milk or cheese, we don't remove it from your diet um, to begin with. We often try to allow people to eat as much uh, as they can where they're not having symptoms. One of the ways in which we think this allergy begins uh, is unusual, but it appears to be uh, derived from having tick bites. And in the, in the United States, we believe that one of the major ticks involved with this is the Lone Star Tick, or Amblyoma americanum. Now, the alpha-gal allergy is found throughout the world, and the Lone Star Tick is not. So we know that there are many other species of ticks that can do this. And we're not at all convinced that tick bites are, in fact, the only way this could happen, but it does seem to be one of the more prominent ways it happens. We also talk to patients about the idea that perhaps the smallest of ticks, the larval form, or colloquially called a seed tick, could also be involved. And these ticks are really hard to identify, but they often uh, create very itchy bites, and people routinely have numerous, 50 to 100 bites at once. So often these are referred to sometimes as chiggers. They're not chiggers but the bites themselves can seem that way. So we're fairly confident that tick bites and seed ticks uh, can lead to this allergy. And we do think that over time, if we, can, if we can not have additional tick bites for folks, that the allergy seems to go away over time, which is good news uh, for most of us. So if you have any uh, further questions or concerns, there's more information available on our website.